But uh, I wanted to, you know, kind of lighten it up before we get into some interesting things. I recently uh, watched on Instagram this whole thing that went down between a, a, a woman named FTN Bay and a rapper named OTF Duty Low. And it was all around and surrounding allegations that he had molested her son. And uh, if you missed this and didn't see on social media, we're going to go ahead and recap a little bit for you so you can get right into it. We're going to catch up with what's going on now. And I sat down and talked to him exclusively. So Damage Blue, are you both aware of this case? Have you seen everything on Instagram? Man, I've seen this all over social media in real time. It was really, I mean, as a father, it was heart wrenching because it was like, I hope this isn't the truth. And the story that was being painted was so horrific as far as the details of what happened with this young child and what he told his mother and the person they were accusing. It was very, um, for me, it was eye opening because I'm always a person that gets really weird about who's around my son or who will be around my nieces, nephews. So when I heard this, it automatically triggered me. And I'm not going to lie. I leaned into the story of the young child and the mother right away. Um, without even knowing all the details. Yeah, I came to this a little bit early, I mean, a little bit late. So I did not hear about the story until she had already started to issue apologies. And so when I saw her on all the blogs apologizing and saying that she had to believe her son and she was doing her due diligence, I immediately started from a place of already being sympathetic towards her because I started with the apology. And then I went back and saw the the allegations and they were really, really bad. And I can just imagine how he must feel. So for me... I see how both sides are really, really upset, but now it's making me sad that they're going against each other because it might've just been a misunderstanding because of a child who was scared. Yeah, and I approach this from the standpoint of somebody who's been a, a survivor of being molested twice. And I wrote about this in my book, God Must Have Forgotten About Me. And the thing that really uh, you know, made this re really complicated is because as you know, I'm anti-cancel culture, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-accountability culture, I'm also anti-child molest because I'm a person who's been a victim uh, and I support those of us who have survived those experiences. But also at the same time, we know that we live in a world where allegations are made every day about people that are not true, you know, and has being somebody that's seen that happen to him himself, I, I, I leaned in on really trying to follow the facts because when we first saw it come across, I said, make sure we post this to bring awareness to what was happening. And then this onslaught of posts from this woman continued to get posted on social media. And then he finally responded. And then it came out that that he allegedly hadn't done it. And then there's been more since then, which we'll get into. But what I want to do is I want to show you a picture from uh, the day that he came to the Hollywood Unlocked Studios. And I took this photo right after the interview. Take a look. Now, now I got a lot of flack for posting that. A lot of people were saying, Jason, this is one you should have sat out. This is, a this is an interview that you shouldn't have did. I want to be able to speak directly to those people that are watching. I'm somebody whose voice was shut down by his mother when he was molested. Somebody did not listen to me. And I fought hard for people to finally believe me. And even in believing me, there was no accountability to the person who took advantage of me or to the people that took advantage of me. And so I feel that on one, at, on one hand, it was my responsibility to share the information with the community and then I'll, allow a conversation to start. But then as we started seeing this unfold, it was really interesting that it looked like um, the mother, FTM Bay, was backtracking from the story. So let me break down for the viewers watching at home so you know exactly what happened. So on October 27th, FTM Bay took to her Instagram to share a post that duty uh, sexually abused her son. Now, this is a rapper who's a part of Lil Dirk's camp. That's what the OTF is, just in case you understand, out of Chicago. Well, in her caption, which has since been deleted, she explains that the alleged assault happened back in August when Duty Low was at her home with her son, her roommate, and while she was at her show. Now, she wrote, quote, on August 6th, I had a show in Orlando, and Duty Low was at my house along with my roommate and my son and his three-year-old cousin. Once I left, this sick man welted three, screw, three screws that he found in my toolbox and shoved them up my son's anus. Now, this mm. is, I mean, a really specific detail that just went on fire on social media. You got, did, Damage, did you see that? Yeah, I, I, like I said, I've seen this all in real time, and I'm not going to lie. I leaned into the story of the, the young boy and the mother because, you know, we've seen this before. I've seen this, unfortunately in my own personal life before of you know people coming around young children and doing things that are inappropriate and honestly it's so specific so to me which is unfortunate i didn't look for if this is true or not i really kind of just leaned into the story where i feel like a lot of people on social media did a lot of people ran to her defense now the kid also said that 
the kid also said that he had soiled his pants and it required his mother to put him back in pampers um and that that it had been so traumatic that um this really caused some behaviors that she hadn't seen blue you were gonna say something yeah, I'm a little bit torn because um, when I was younger, I was molested by somebody in my family and I instinctively knew that nobody was going to believe me. Um, and there were a lot of people that I knew that I grew up with who were also molested and we all knew that we weren't going to be believed. And so we kind of leaned on each other. And so I know what it's like to be a child who's been silenced effectively. Right. And so when a child comes forward and tells a story like this. As a parent, you do have to believe your child and do your due diligence. And so I guess my confusion is if it was later proven, and maybe this is something that you guys covered in the interview with him, if it was later proven that the child had been lying because he was scared and making up tall tales, which factually happens a very small percentage of the time, but does happen. Why is there anger towards the mother for doing her due diligence? Because the alternative of, do of doing nothing to me would have been much worse. And so that's where I'm confused about any backlash towards her, because whether he was telling the truth or not, you have to first check as a parent. Am I missing well, something? There was, well, there was audio um, uh, recordings of her conversation with her son that she uploaded. Take a listen. Why are you about to cry? No, no. Baby, tell me what you have to tell me. You want to cry. You what? I'm not about to cry. You look like it. So please tell me what's going on with you. My date. Hmm? My date. <laughs> no, no, okay, okay. My date before you put your children in my life. Ha ha. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay baby. It's okay. What happened? So that was that was taken on October 27th. So now a few hours after that post went up, Duty Lo then went to his Instagram to take uh, his own voice back and said that it didn't happen. He denied all of them and that her statements were defamatory. So he then uploaded a video that he said was proof that FTM Bay has been manipulating evidence in order to defame his character. Now, this video shows a clip of FTN, FTN Bay's son recounting his experience and blaming it on a person named Alex, who revealed in subsequent screenshots of the text Message to be this boy's three-year-old cousin. Uh, take a look. We can't lie on Alex, okay? Because if she didn't do it, we can't say that she did it. Because it's, it's, that's really, really bad. And you can't blame somebody for something like that, okay? You can't, okay? So I want you to tell me what's happened. Start from where you were. What happened, please? Tell me what happened. So where I am is when I sat down. No, 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 you said David did it. You said David did it in my room. Well, after he posted that clip, FTM Bay went and uploaded a second clip of the second child, the cousin, who's claiming that he actually did it. Take a listen. I, I, they did something. Something. What do he do? He, 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 he. I saw Wesley run around. Uh, and then he, and then David was chasing him. He was. All right. After you saw him chasing Wesley, did you see him do anything else to Wesley? Um, he made him cry. 
So, you know, she she went on live saying that she did not coach her son. You guys can pay attention to these details. I'm going to show you this. Take a look. Video. And now as far as like, so basically I'm saying I was never coaching him. It was hard for him to talk. You have to understand that he's five and he was molested by his mom's boyfriend, who is a man. And my son is a, as a boy. My son is well aware of his feelings, was well aware that he was violated. So it was hard for him to talk. I had to help him talk. I am not coaching him. I never once said, you need to say it or you said it was him, right? I said, no, no, no. You said it was David. Keep going. Keep going. We're not going to go back. We're not going to go backwards. Keep going. Tell me what happened. Let me help you. That video is very long. And only parts of the video is being shown. I uploaded the video of me with the crime because it's just like, I don't understand how anybody could sit here and think that I would go all this extra mile and I'd be crying. I don't yeah, so there's that.